Hey guys, Paul here at VIR, Virginia International Raceway, and we've got the brand new... <laughs> I just swallowed a bug. <coughs> hey guys, Paul here, VIR, Virginia International Raceway with TFL Car, and we're checking out the brand new 2022 Cadillac CT4B Blackwing. Uh, this one in electric blue, and these cars are pretty incredible. We just went through the presentation of all the technical details, and let's use that word details. There are so many things uh, on this vehicle. They talked a lot about their DPI uh, Cadillac racing program and technology transfer from the track to the road, and you know, you kind of roll your eyes at that kind of stuff because you hear it all the time. But then they go through all of these details about all of the things they've done to this car. This one has both of the aerodynamic packages on it. You can see lots of carbon fiber, uh, tons of horsepower from a twin turbo V6. Uh, and remember, this is the CTS-4. And we also have the five as well. Those are two different cars. And, uh, and this is the four with the twin turbo V6. So this is just an initial impressions video. Come back on August 3rd. That's when the embargo ends and we can actually talk about the driving impressions of this car. All right, underneath the hood of the CT4 Blackwing, 3.6 liter twin turbo V6. Uh, this engine has been completely updated and it also features, believe it or not, not only a 10-speed automatic, but also a six-speed manual. And the six-speed manual version of this car has titanium connecting rods, uh, something you really only see in exotic cars or exotic motorcycles. It helps the engine rev faster. They're a lot more expensive than normal uh, steel connecting rods, so that's kind of neat. Also, a completely redone intake manifold uh, and intake plenum system that gives them 30% more airflow to the engine. What does it add up to? 472 horsepower and 445 pound-feet of torque. And again, either through a 10-speed automatic or a six-speed manual and a rear-wheel drive car to boot. This thing should be a lot of fun. Underneath the hood here, we're looking at where the engine is placed because this is a big deal when we're, when we're talking about handling. Uh, and you can see here is the, the top of the suspension. The actual center of the front wheel is about right here. And if you take that line across, that equal to right about the front of the engine. So they're trying to place the engine in more of a front mid sort of situation and that gives them a little bit wetter weight distribution. Now when you add all of it up, it isn't amazing. We're not getting to like the 50% front and rear that you'd see in a BMW. It's about 53 on the front and about 47 on the rear. But the net net is they're doing everything they can to push that engine back and down. And again, if you think about, oh, that's kind of a, you know, the BMW has better weight distribution. Remember, this thing is quicker around the racetrack. And uh, that's what ends up mattering in the end. And again, a bigger front tire, front suspension geometry, all of those things help give the car the front grip it needs to turn those lap times. So it may not have the ultimate weight distribution that you see out of some cars, again, BMW being a great example, where they're known for their 50-50 weight distribution, but it does turn a quicker lap time. So Cadillac being Cadillac, you know, with their very edgy designs and their, their vertical long daytime running lights we see on all their vehicles. It's very distinctively a Cadillac product, but it's a bit smoother and softer and actually with flared fenders uh, and all sorts of little aerodynamic tweaks to this car. So it's, it's a much more performance oriented vehicle, but definitely more track focused than we've ever seen from Cadillac before. So when we talk about track focused and, and you're gonna hear me saying that phrase a lot, there's so many things here. Now we've got both aerodynamic packages on this car. So this is all real carbon fiber and it even has a dive plane on it here. So we've got a full on dive plane on the car. Again, all carbon fiber pieces, even with a little bit of a shroud for the wheel because that actually adds quite a bit of downforce, not having the wheel poke out uh, over the fender, so they add this little carbon fiber lip here. So this is the kind of stuff, no kidding, that I'm used to looking at like on a McLaren or a Pagani Huayra. There's a lot of detail work in this car that is functional. Every bit of it is functional. They, they made that point where they said every single thing you see on this car is a functional aerodynamic feature that either reduces drag, increases efficiency, or adds downforce. 
These ducts here are actually true brake cooling ducts to the front brakes of the car. The car comes with rear ducts standard. For some reason, they don't put them on the car. They're actually in the trunk and you can mount them yourself. And even the grill, they redesigned the Cadillac grill here. And you can see these little features on the back. They were very concerned with the airflow going through the grill element to try and get maximum cooling uh, into not only the radiator here, but also the air uh, to water intercooler system for that 472 horsepower twin turbo V6. So a lot of really interesting detail work. And for me, like as a car nerd, I eat this stuff up. I love it because this is the type of stuff that you do usually see on race cars. And so they kind of went to those lengths with this vehicle to add all of these little features and you actually net net out of this, we've got an actual sedan that produces downforce. Most road cars have lift. Uh, this one has downforce. There's a pretty good underwing going in here. So you've got kind of a front splitter, but also what's going on in there, strikes that are diverting the air into brake cooling and through the fender wells. And then on the side of the car, follow me over here, we've actually got functional vents to let air out of this high pressure area that ends up being in here. So if that front splitter and underwing are producing downforce, one way that it works is you have to get the air out or the air stalls in the wheel well. So they've got these vents here. A lot of cars you see these, these are just cosmetic, but these are actual functional vents on this vehicle. So going from the vents, then we also have the side skirts. That's part of the second carbon fiber package that's on the car. So there are two of them. And as we come towards the rear of the car, look at this spoiler. I mean, this thing is huge. And again, this is part of the carbon fiber package one that you can get. And, and this, this thing produces downforce. The whole car actually produces about 160 pounds of downforce. And again, you look at the size of this relative to my hand, certainly the biggest spoiler, a carbon fiber to boot, that I've ever seen on a production vehicle, especially a luxury sedan. And then going to the, down below in the rear here, we've also got a diffuser uh, down below, and again, part of the carbon fiber package. So all of this stuff nets out to, well, look kind of cool, and yeah, maybe a little bit boy racer, but it works. Uh, so we end up with a, an actual street car that's producing downforce instead of lift. And that's why this thing can turn the proposed lap times, they say it tur turns, where they're claiming these cars, both the four and the five Blackwing, are quicker around the racetrack than any of its competitors, including BMW M cars, including AMG Mercedes. Supposedly it's quicker than all of them. So no stone unturned. They went to great lengths on the car to give it the most performance they can have. Again, if you're claiming lap times better than any of your competitors, you've got to have done everything right from a performance standpoint. You start with the Michelins. We've got an 18 inch, so not a, not a massive diameter tire, a 255 in the front, which is larger than the previous CTSVs. Um, it also is the new Pilot 4S. And these uh, forged wheels, they have a couple of different styles of wheels you can get, but they're all, again, very lightweight. And then brakes, we're looking at a Brembo package. So they partner with Brembo, and you can see those two-piece rotors, so aluminum hat and a full cast iron rotor, and they're huge. Uh, we also have a six piston caliper in the front and a four piston caliper in the rear. So, so this saves a lot of weight going to those two pieces. So you don't have that cast iron hat. It allows for expansion and contraction for track use. And they talk about track use a lot with this car. It has a track monitor system where you can actually have 34 different data points that you can overlay onto 1080p video and record as you're driving, uh, as well as a you know, lap timer and all that good stuff. So they talk about technology transfer from the racetrack a lot, and they talk a lot about driving these Cadillacs on the racetrack. Again, you go to a lot of these things and manufacturers go, you could drive it on a track. This one, they're like, we expect you to. It's built for it, go do it, it's great at it. So it's kind of fun for me as a, a track guy to, to hear a manufacturer so confident about the performance of the car. But then when you look at the bits and the pieces of the car, you can see why they are so confident. Looking at the rear, we've got a 275 tire on the back. Again, that Michelin Pilot 4S. And we also have a four piston uh, Brembo caliper on the rear and an external parking brake. And all of that stuff let them shave several pounds off of the unsprung weight of the rear of the car. So they're all proud of all these little details. When you add them up, you end up with a real performance vehicle.
Now these days cars are getting heavier and heavier and they've done everything they can to save weight. They're very proud that it's below 4,000 pounds. And again, it blows my mind that that's actually a thing. Like you're, you're happy. I remember when cars were, you know, below 3,000 pounds. But with all the safety and all the amenities that are on cars these days, that's the world we live in. And even the BMWs and the Mercedes and the, you know, the M versions and the AMG versions, they're all gaining weight as well. So this thing's 3880 base. And all the versions, whether it's 10 speed automatic or the six speed manual like we have here, stay down below 4,000 pounds just by a little bit. Now, when we take a look at the interior of the CT4 Blackwing, things you notice, very driver oriented. Look at these seats. Uh, we've got all sorts of bolstering here, high and low, also perforated uh, leather, so they're ventilated, which is really handy with leather seats these days. That's a luxury feature I don't think I can do without anymore. Uh, this car being the six speed manual, um, we've got a very tight little nice shifter here and of course a three pedal car which is fantastic to have the option of the 10 speed automatic or an actual six speed manual so very happy to see it. And then moving up to the steering wheel it's starting to look a little like Formula One wheels on uh, road cars these days with all the controls and as a matter of fact Cosworth, who is a partner with Cadillac's DPI race team, actually does the steering wheel for them on this car and also some of their data acquisition that you can see on the video screen you can record while you're driving on the racetrack. So, so they actually have a partnership with a racing manufacturer, Cosworth, to actually produce some of these details that are on this car. All right, firing it up. You got all the displays that light up, of course, automatically. We've got a touchscreen in the center here with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all of that standard. Now there is Bluetooth, so wireless Apple CarPlay on this vehicle. So that's kind of the next step. And it does have an inductive charger. So that's, that's sort of like the, the, the ultimate combination is you get the inductive charger uh, and the wireless CarPlay. And that way you can just take the phone out, throw it on the inductive charger and run your CarPlay without having to worry about a USB cable. We've got a heads up display that kind of helps there. But we have uh, on the vehicle, all your climate controls here along this bar. So that's fairly intuitive and easy to do. And then you've got your entire screen uh, here and of course your central information display for all your driving stuff there. And so all of it's pretty quick and snappy and, and fairly easy to, to find. So the car also comes with a lot of different modes. You've got touring mode, my mode, which is a full customizable individual mode. Uh, then you can go snow ice mode. And as you might imagine, that's with everything dialed way back to make the cars as gentle as possible track mode so everything kind of maxed out you can see how the tachometer changes here and now we go to a, a horizontal bar for the tachometer with the speed in the middle with tire pressures uh, and engine temperature all right there oil temperature so a track focus mode and as you're even doing that you can hear the exhaust change on the car because you're changing the valve on the exhaust system and then there's the v button which this button actually will go ahead and change your stability modes and so you can you can hit the button again and that'll actually disable you can see the traction control and the stability control turned off and then from that you can cycle through and you say hey I want it to be you know wet or dry conditions so you can actually choose between different modes within the track mode but also you'll notice down here the rev match button so it does have rev matching built into it it also has a flat shift feature which means that if you're over 90 percent throttle uh, and, and you're basically driving the car really hard, obviously at 90% throttle and 472 horsepower, you're, you're moving quickly. Um, you don't have to lift off the gas, you just push in the clutch, pull the next gear, and it'll actually let you flat shift the car, basically. So, uh, again, a lot of fun details. And it does have that rev match button, which lets you just turn off rev match uh, by hitting the button. So it's default on, and you can hit the button and turn it off. Taking a look at the trunk here, it does have a 60-40 split fold down. And let's see if it has a real, oh, it looks like we've got an inflator kit here. And what is this? Oh my, deflector kit for the brakes. Deflector kit, so that's, that's a little air deflector to scoop air into and there's a little instruction manual there. Oh, that may be the funnest thing I've ever found inside a car is like an Easter egg. So yeah, this is how you mount it, they're metal and it's for brake cooling. 
So very much uh, a neat little little uh, find there in the back of the car. Now getting into the back, remembering that this thing is supposed to compete against things like a, a C-Class Benz or a BMW M2, it's not a huge back seat. Remember uh, me making fun of myself in prior videos, this is where the seat would be for me. I'm five foot seven, so not very tall. I do have reasonable out of headroom. It's a comfortable seat. It actually has a nice slope to the seat bottom. Again, that holds you in place and you've got all that, uh, that nice quilted uh, leather in here. And Alcantara on the back of the seats with the nicely embossed uh, V logo in the back of the seat there. So you have to come back on August 3rd to find out how this thing really performs, but the initial impressions, just looking at all the technical specifications and walking around the car, is that this thing is really, really impressive. Uh, not only does it have loads of horsepower and torque, uh, it's got a ton of engineering that goes into the chassis, the suspension, the magnetic ride shocks that are on the car. Uh, just also the electronics on the vehicle itself, also really, really impressive. And let's not forget, six-speed manual transmission on this vehicle. Like, all of this kind of points to Cadillac's intent for this thing not just to be a pretend performance car, but an actual track car that someone would buy for kind of dual duty of, of yeah, I'm gonna drive it to work, but I'm also gonna use this thing every weekend of the summer out on the racetrack to have fun in it. And that's something, maybe it's just difficult to wrap your head around that from the Cadillac brand, but they were reminding us in the presentation about their three recent DPI championships racing in the IMSA series. So, so Cadillac knows about racing, knows about motorsports, has cars that actually really do perform well on the track, and has lap times that are better than any of its competitors. So remember to come back to TFL Car for more X-Stig racetrack car reviews.